So President Trump is, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> President Trump is deploying the Navy hospital ship USNS Comfort to New York Harbor. And here's the governor of New York reacting to that today. Watch this. I spoke to the president this morning about specific actions the president is going to take. I can tell you he is fully engaged on trying to help New York. He's being very creative uh, and very energetic. And the president is going to dispatch uh, the comfort to us. It will be in New York City Harbor. It's literally a floating hospital, which will add capacity. And the president said that he would dispatch that immediately. So each Navy hospital ship, these ships are just amazing. Uh, and they come into port in the times of greatest need. They have a thousand beds, operating rooms, labs, other medical devices. Democratic Congressman Max Rose also commended the move, saying, I'm incredibly grateful for the quick and decisive action by the president and governor to hear our call to deploy the USNS Comfort to New York Harbor. So joining me now exclusively is VA Secretary Robert Wilkie, a member of the White House Coronavirus Task Force. Secretary Wilkie, thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you, know, you for having me, First of all, it's just, it's not every, it's not every night that we sort of show that kind of bipartisan support and the spirit of, you know, working together that we are seeing right now in this effort. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, as the former Undersecretary of Defense for Readiness, uh, the comfort was one of the things I was responsible for. It is a great asset, and it is a great sign of the president's commitment, not only to his hometown, but to being as aggressive as possible in confronting uh, what he calls this invisible enemy. And I would add, with the comfort, you mentioned the 1,000 beds. It will have 600 medical personnel on it doctors, nurses, psychologists. Uh, on the VA side for New York City, Martha, uh, we've been in contact with the deputy mayor. Uh, we just sent into New York uh, one of our mobile vet centers to deal specifically with mental health issues, mental health concerns that may be confronting veterans in, in New York City. So it is, as you said, a, a concerted bipartisan effort. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that you point out is that the response in the VA hospitals and what you all did to protect the veteran population in those hospitals early on has really been sort of a model for what we're seeing at other, other facilities, right? Yes, it has. We, we were first, but uh, I have to say that we rehearse these things uh, regularly. Uh, we are the nation's response force when it comes to natural disasters and, in this case, epidemics. We, epidemics, we cut off access to our hospitals for everyone except the patients. We triage people outside of the hospitals. But more importantly, and this is something that concerns you uh, because of that wonderful book that you read, uh, the people who occupy our, our, our living centers in our hospitals are of the World War II era for the most part, uh, those who have sacrificed the most and given the most. I had to make a very difficult decision and cut off visitors to those most precious citizens that we have, but it was done as a measure to protect them from the outside. We've also uh, stopped all elective surgeries, dental surgeries, uh, all in an effort to keep our veterans safe inside of our hospitals. Well, uh, that is, is a tribute uh, to your leadership, and we hope that they are all doing well as a result of that. Have you been testing your population, and how is it going? Yes, we, we have tested well over 300 uh, veterans. Uh, we have right now 44 uh, who have tested positive. Sadly, one has passed away, uh, a veteran, an older veteran in Portland. Uh, but what we are seeing right now is that the majority of those we have tested have been able to be quarantined at home. Now, I expect a surge. Uh, I take my cues from Dr. Fauci. Uh, I, I can't expect that the numbers will be this low. But we have been aggressive. The president demanded that we be aggressive. And we put in place practice public health measures to make sure that we can make our hospitals as safe as possible. Yeah, you know, in terms of what you worry about, and you just, you know, mentioned uh, the concern about a surge, in terms of supplies, in terms of masks and gloves and all of that, what kind of coordination is going on? You, I think, have good supplies of those things. Yes. And can those supplies be spread around to help some of these other facilities that don't have what they need? 
Yes. So we started planning for this in February, at the at the beginning of February, and we stocked up on things like ventilators, masks, protective equipment, and actually by eliminating things like elective surgery and dental care, we are we are saving uh, the wear and tear on those assets as we speak. Um, once the president declared a national emergency, then we had access, we have access to the national stockpiles. I, I've been working today with several private uh, laboratories to make sure that we have a steady supply of testing kits. Uh, we're doing the same with masks. Um, but as part of our national mission, uh, we support the civilian uh, civilian America when we are called upon. So we will be able, when called upon, to help HHS and FEMA uh, distribute some of those assets across the country to where they are needed. Uh, you will be called upon. Uh, we all will be called upon, and we appreciate what you're doing, and we hope that the veterans in the care of these hospitals will uh, receive the best care, the best care possible. And we thank you very and, much. Yeah. And I thank you, and I thank you for your book on Iwo Jima. As you know, what Nimitz said, a place where uncommon valor was common, and you have you have made it real again. Thank you very much, Secretary Wilkie. Good to speak with you tonight. Thank you, sir. Thank Good luck. You.